Welcome to this ADF Insider recording. The ADF Insider series is designed to give you in-depth coverage of implementing ADF features using JDeveloper and the Oracle Application Development Framework. My name is Chris Muir. I'm a Senior Principal Product Manager for the Oracle JDeveloper and ADF team. And today we'll be looking at a presentation called, in a nutshell, the ADF UI shell or the ADF UI shell. Uh, we need to start off with the usual disclaimer and safe harbour statement from Oracle about anything that I talk about in today's presentation. You know, necessarily you can't hold Oracle accountable for it. But hopefully today we're going to show you how to use the ADF UI shell in your day-to-day -day business to make your ADF development more productive. What we're going to cover today is a general introduction to the ADF UI shell and what is it, a bit of a history of it, then looking at how to design and develop with the ADF UI shell and most importantly for this presentation, a demonstration. We'll also talk about some of the limitations of the ADF UI shell and how you should implement it locally in terms of source code and we'll finalise all of this with some references. So one of the first things we need to cover about the ADF UI shell is how do you pronounce it. Now in the United States you probably pronounce it the ADF UI shell, okay? You very much pronounce out the letters. If you lived in Britain, and here's a bit of a joke because I'm an Australian, this is the Queen of Australia and also the United Kingdom, this, uh, the Queen would probably call this the ADF user interface shell. However, as an Australian, I tend to abbreviate this to the ADF UI shell, okay? So during this presentation, if you do hear me say the ADF UI shell, I'm talking about the ADF UI shell or the ADF user interface shell. Just to make this slightly more confusing, within JDeveloper, it actually calls the ADF UI shell the dynamic tab shell, though our documentation externally and in the tool tends to intermix the term ADF UI shell and dynamic tab shell. So there's a little bit of confusion in terminology here, but really we're just talking about the same thing. So regardless of how we pronounce it, what is the ADF UI shell? What is, it, what is it? Well, we've been talking about it, you hear all about it, but you know, we don't really know what it's all about. Well, to be honest, if you're an Oracle customer and you've attended any Oracle conferences, user group conferences, or seen any of our online presentations or papers, you really have actually already seen the ADF UI shell in action. A lot of our contemporary products actually include it. Here we have a number of running applications, such as the Oracle Fusion applications. This is Oracle's contemporary uh, business suite that's now available. Here we have the Oracle Directory Services Manager, Oracle Entitlement Server, the Oracle Identity Self-Service, and the Oracle Web Services Manager. And these are all different products built for different purposes by Oracle Corporation, but you will notice they all tend to have a very similar look and feel. Not only do you have different, uh, the same sort of colors, fonts, and logo positions, but you also seem, also seem to have the same tab positions, menus on the left, or navigation structures on the left, the main content on the right. And it's this is what is the ADF UI shell, which we're going to investigate further today. In addition, the ADF UI shell, if you're using a BIDI or a bi-directional or an internationalization app, such as this one here in Arabic, you <coughs> You can see that, um, yes, we still sort of have that same look and feel, but rather than from left to right, we now have an ab application built from right to left. Here is, taking away the, languages, uh, the language problem, here is the Web Service Manager. And you would notice in the Web Service Manager that it has a very structured look and feel in terms of the application. We have a logo at the top left. We have some links at the top right, accessibility, help, sign out. We have a web services manager tab, which underneath seems to have some children tabs, such as browse, search, home, client, EJB, and so on and so forth. And you see things at the bottom, like we have uh, um, about boxes telling us what version of the web service manager is. All of this is part of what the ADF UI shell is all about. So what we're going to do now is to reinforce what I'm just talking about there is we're actually going to look at a demonstration application that was written by Frank Nymphius more recently for Oracle Magazine that shows you the ADF UI shell in action. And we'll actually show you what it looks like and how it performs. So 
So here we see a demonstration application that comes from Frank Nymphus's Oracle Magazine article on the ADF UE shell called the Oracle Mag Summit ADF application. As you can already see, it seems to have a standard look and feel that we saw in the previous screenshots. We have logos at the top left, a spinner at the top right. We have things like a splitter here to allow the user to expand or collapse the, uh, the area at the top. We have some primary level tabs, a navigation area, and down the bottom, though it doesn't have anything in it at the moment, we have an area for putting status messages, copyright messages, and so on. With this main page selected, let's drill in and have a look at the customer care center. And when we do that, we notice that the page that is rendered on the left hand side, we get a tree of different countries. And when we select on one of these tree items, we can actually see a number of different customers underneath each country. Okay, so this part of the ADF UI shell is our navigation area. And from this navigation area, what we're allowed to do is click on different items here. And when we do that, you can see now on the right hand side, we've invoked a second level tab. In this case, it's the orders bounded task flow that we've invoked showing data for the Unisports customer. And inside that particular bounded task flow, we're showing uh, order information about that, um, that Unisports. So from here, from the left hand side, the navigation area, we can invoke other secondary level tabs. And now on the right hand side, you can see we have orders open for Sims Athletics and also Unisports orders, which we can happily switch between. So from the user's point of view, they're just not looking now at one customer, they have the ability to look at multiple customers, or from more of a technical point of view, they're actually operating with multiple bounded task flows at the same time. Now in Frank's demonstration, he shows that we not only stuck to opening one sort of bounded task load based on certain customers, we can even right click on the menu options in the left hand side and maybe create a new customer or show all the customer orders as we've already done, or whoops, let's do that again, right click, edit a customer, and here you can see we have an entirely different bounded task load available to us. Again, we're able to switch between these secondary level dynamic task flows or bounded task flows or tabs and as you see we're switching between them we're seeing the relevant contents and in addition this little drop down here if we have too many tabs open and they can't fit in the horizontal size of the page we can switch between the tabs too. So as you can see the ADF UI shell isn't just about layouts and looks and feel look and feel it's also about this dynamic tab feature these secondary level tabs that allow the user to um, spawn I guess spawn is a good word, or, or create multiple different instances of different bounded task flows that are designed to show the same things, but with parameters coming in, like for example, uh, the parameter ID 201 for Unisports, or alternately 202 for Sims Athletics, we can now show those bounded task flows with different sets of data. So this is a very powerful, empowering facility for the, developer to, the developers to provide to our users. Now that we've had a look at the ADF UI shell running, let's just revisit this question is, what is the ADF UI shell? Now, we could start out with a slide like this. We could say, well, is the ADF UI shell an application look and feel? So colors and fonts, or is it a page template with layouts and static content areas and dynamic content areas? Or is it a bunch of code to manage the, uh, the dynamic tabs that we saw at the second level? Or is it all of above, or is this even a trick question? In reality, it is a trick question because the ADF UI shell is something that you can pick up and use, and it has definitely A, B, and C included in it. But if you so desire, you can actually just take parts of the ADF UI shell and use it if you want. It's kind of up to you. You're free to take the page templates and then start rearranging them and uh, using them to your heart's content. Or you can take all of this logic and all of this uh, provided code and use the ADF UI shell as it's delivered as a package. It's up to you. During this presentation, obviously we're talking about the latter, how to use the ADF UI shell as a single package of code. Again, though, what is the ADF UI shell? Well, there's different ways of looking at the ADF UI shell just besides its implementation. One of the things I extremely like about the ADF UI shell having been a consultant who's worked at a number of sites, is when I go into a site and we start discussing adopting ADF, 
I often find managers and business analysts and UE designers get bogged down into discussing, you know, what colors the screen should have and what should our logo at the top be. And this is slightly frustrating from my background because meanwhile, the programmers have to go and build a lot of different business functions, a lot of different bounded task flows and build this into an application. And, you know, the core staff who provide all those requirements are still considering colors and logos and so on. So one of the things I consider the ADF UE shell is to be is an accelerator, okay? And I think it's an accelerator in the fact that when teams start out, it gives you a shell around your application that, you know, maybe doesn't do everything that you want it to, but the fact is you get it for free, it can allow you to go and focus on the other business parts of your application. You can create an application or, or a front end for your application, bringing all your bounded task flows together, and this will get your teams onto developing what they should be for your business, you know, the actual real business application, rather than considering all the flashy front ends. Now, down the line, you may choose to replace the ADF UE shell with your own equivalent, your own better improved version, or something else that comes from Oracle in the future, but let's just think of the ADF UE shell from one perspective as an accelerator to get you developing up quickly and already have a shell for your application to run with. Alternatively, the ADF UI shell is also an educational tool. When presenting and demonstrating on ADF at different, at different customer sites, I find that the ADF UI shell is a very good one to introduce to programmers because it goes beyond just the simple page templates that ADF does so well. When programmers are just thinking about uh, designing a shell for an application, they tend to just think about, oh, we just need a page template with a facet here and some attributes there, maybe some colors and fonts. But a really sophisticated, rich internet application delivered on the internet probably needs facilities such as the ADF UI shell for allowing the user to interact with the application in a more of a window-driven way, much like a desktop application. So when programmers and developers and managers get to see the ADF UE shell in action, they start to realize there's probably a different way to deliver their application beyond just a standard website. So I like to use the ADF UE shell as a good tool for uh, effectively highlighting or, or bringing that spark of inspiration to developers' eyes uh, so they understand what they can actually do in terms of building an RIA, a rich internet application for their company or organization. There's something else that the ADF UI shell is as well, and this is only one that's kind of starting to be realized by Oracle staff in the last couple of years, is now that Oracle has delivered Fusion applications, which the ADF UI shell came from, we are starting to get customers coming up to us and saying, well, we want to build ADF applications that look like Fusion applications. We want our applications to look like Oracle's latest contemporary business applications. Well, the fact is the ADF UE shell came from Fusion applications. It's been released for customers, simplified for customers to use. And so you can use it to make your own custom ADF applications look similar to Fusion applications. So you can enhance and you know provide the latest sort of contemporary type business applications in your own shop. So ultimately it will give your own applications that minty Fusion apps taste or feel. Having considered now the ADF UE shell, what it does, how you use it, why it's something that you want to have a look at, let's just consider the history of the ADF UE shell. As I mentioned previously, the ADF UE shell came out of Oracle Fusion Applications development, and in fact it is the shell that's used by uh, Fusion Apps. It was designed by Oracle's expertise, or its expert teams I should say, known as the user experience teams. Now if you don't know what user experience means, which is commonly abbreviated to UX, think of contemporary web designers. But when we talk about contemporary web designers, we're not just talking about um, people who have graphics degrees and are laying out web pages. User experience people are designed and trained to think about users product, the user's productivity when they're using computer systems. Okay, So it's not just about does our website look pretty, but is how fast our user can make their way through the application. So for some applications, if you imagine organizations like Amazon.com, the user experience is very important to ensure that the customers quickly get through to the checkout and purchase items. From a business applications point of view, such as Oracle Fusion applications, user experience is very important. For example, let's say you have a data entry clerk who's entering invoices. 
Now, if the invoice takes 20 steps as opposed to 5 steps, and uh, each 20 steps takes 10 seconds as opposed to 5 seconds, you can quickly see that the user's productivity is bogged down. So the user experience team is very much interested in improving the productivity of users to make sure that overall that your business applications are being used in the manner and the speed that you require them for. So taking a step back, Oracle Fusion applications, the ADF UE shell as designed by the user experience team is something that's been provided to you to use in your own business applications. It has been considerably thought through in terms of its structures and design, well tested and supported by Oracle. And in the future, we will be expanding and improving upon this product. Okay, so it's not just a free piece of code for you to use, but we don't support. It will be going into future releases and it will be supported as such. The ADF UI shell was introduced in JDeveloper 11.1.1.2.0 and has subsequently been in all previous releases. In 11.1.1.6.0, there was a minor uh, update to the ADF UI shell introduced to support multi-browser tabs. Um, that version is fully compatible with the previous versions of JDeveloper. So you can take it back to earlier versions of JDeveloper and still use it if you want. Let's now consider the design and development of the ADF UI shell or an application that uses the ADF UI shell. In fact, how would you build an application if you had the ADF UI shell? What would you need to think about? Well, first of all, again, let's just go over the characteristics of an ADF UI shell type application. Generally, you have one page or one ADF UI shell page per subsystem within your overall application. Now your application may only have one subsystem, so you only have one page in what you build. But you might have a system that's made up of a number of different uh, modules, such as a HR module, a procurement subsystem, and so on. So generally speaking, you will have one ADF UI shell page per those subsystems. As we mentioned in terms of characteristics, the ADF UI shell, one of the, uh, the some of the advantages of it is once you uh, build number of pages for those subsystems. They will have consistent page layout because it's adopted the ADF UI shell. There will be predictable navigation behavior for the users because you've adopted the ADF UI shell. In turn, because the ADF UI shell embeds uh, our banner task flows in it and uh, we're using features in ADF such as partial page refresh, we don't have to update the whole page when the user makes a data change, which a lot of websites out there suffer from as a problem. It's very visually disturbing to the user as the web page redraws itself and they get flicked up to the top of the, um, the web page. And also from a characteristic point of view, the ADF UI shell allows users to manage separate tabs within the shell. And these separate tabs, as we've seen, which have bounded task flows in them, these separate tabs allow the user to maybe open a bounded task flow one time, two times, five times, to allow themselves a really rich way at looking into the facilities of the system. Obviously, the ADF UI shell makes very strong use of bounded task flows embedded in regions, which get put in the second level tabs, the, uh, the, the um, dynamic tabs. And strictly speaking, just so we're clear, the ADF UI shell doesn't actually define the colors and fonts of your application. This is actually defined by the ADF skins, which you can freely change um, separate to that of the ADF UI shell for your application. In considering how to design and develop an application based on the ADF UI shell, once you understand what the main web pages in your application are going to be, so maybe they, uh, you're going to have subsystems such as HR, payroll, administration, procurement. You'll then create a number of main pages based on the ADF UI shell. And these will become the first level tabs in the individual web pages that you design. So in the screenshot I've got below, you can see for the Oromag Summit ADF application, there is four primary tabs, storefront, customer care center, shipping and handling and human resources. And each one of these in turn will be implemented as a separate JSPX uh, page, which are based on the ADF UI shell. Once you've designed and developed that first level, what you then need to do is go and consider the major, uh, major functions of your applications, which equates to the bounded task flows for each page or each subsystem that you've just defined. So in this example screenshot down below, you can see the customer care center has bounded task flows to edit a customer, 
So we can actually see there we've got one for editing Sim Athletics and one for editing Uni Sports. But you can also create, we've also created another banner task flow to look at the order of Uni Sports. Okay, so in designing each one of the primary tabs, you then need to think about all of the major business functions, um, and they all become banner task flows. And at runtime within that web page, via the navigation controls on the left, you will invoke the bounded task flows as this secondary level dynamic tabs on the uh, right hand side here we can see highlighted. Once we understand the collection of our bounded task flows from a design perspective, we then need to design and develop the navigation facility. And we can see a screenshot of this again from the Oromag Summit ADF on the uh, right hand side here. Now the navigation controls can be simply a bunch of links, or a data-driven context, right-click context menus, or in the demonstration uh, demo app that we saw earlier from Frank Nymphus's um, demonstration uh, application, it can be a tree control of dynamic data. It's really up to you. It's up to you to realize what's the best way to allow your users to navigate through the system. However, at some point, those navigation items need to be connected to the bounded task flows that you're going to invoke in the rest of the application. Of significance from a development point of view, once you understand the navigation controls on the left and the banner task flows that you're going to invoke as dynamic types on the right, you need to create a special class called the Shell Launcher, which calls a dynamic tabs class called Tabs Context of Java, which has all the smarts in it for the dynamic shell in order to work out how to spawn those second level tabs. In the moment during the demonstration, we'll look at how to do this exactly. Finally, in terms of each page that you're generating for the application, <clears throat> the overall ADF UI shell has a number of predefined facets, basically placeholders where you can drop content and attributes to change the uh, change the overall ADF UI shell and how it's presented. So in the diagram on the right, you might want to drop in to the logo facet, your own logo into the ADF UI shell, or down the bottom, some copyright messages, status messages, or about messages. Or alternatively, some of the attributes such as branding, logos, and copyright, um, you can actually inject the actual text into these and the ADF UI shell will present it for you. Now, if your application is made up of a number of pages that use the ADF UI shell, you would need to set these on each individual page. But overall, you'll get a, a very much a static or a consistent look and feel across your overall application. With that in mind, Having now talked about designing and developing with the ADF UI shell, let's actually go and build an application that um, and we'll actually show you how to build an application using the ADF UI shell. And this will show you the major steps so you can go back to your uh, organization, basically back to your PC and doing the same thing. Okay, so what we have here is a very little basic uh, application that's already been pre-built with two task flows. You'll see in the unbounded task flow, there's basically a sort of a test page which calls a test temp task flow and test depth task flow, which are basically pages that just wrap these department task flows and emp task flows, employees task flows. Those two task flows effectively give you facilities to view and edit Oracle HR schema departments and employees um, table data. In terms of the task flows, there's nothing very significant about them for the demonstration, though we'll just have a quick look at one and then see them running. This is the department's task flow. What you can do for the department's task flow is pass in a department ID. If you do, you get to edit that department, then save and exit. Or alternatively, if you don't pass a department ID in, you get to view a list of the departments and maybe create a new one or edit an existing one, then save and exit. In terms of the two task flows, they do exactly the same thing just for different tables. So it's um, not very interesting to look at both of them. We'll just have a quick look at a runtime version of the task flows. So this is the test page we were talking about from the unbounded task flow. From there, we can click on test department task flow, which will drill down to the page with the department's task flow embedded inside it. That task flow allows you to see all the departments, click on one of them, edit, roll back, and so on. If we go back to the original test page, we could also do exactly the same for the employee's task flow, or we can pass in an employee ID and then click the test employee task flow button. And this bypasses the tables page and effectively gives you the ability to edit the employee straight off. Now, again, the task flows here aren't so important. It's what we're going to do with them in terms of building them into an ADF UI shell application. So let's return to JDeveloper. 
we'll just close down the unnecessary uh, Unbounded Task Flow. I'm going to strip those original pages out of the Unbounded Task Flow, and now we're going to start building an application with our ADF UI shell. Now you remember during the presentation we talked about that the ADF UI shell you will have one too many pages based on your subsystems. So we might have a page for HR in our overall application, a page for payroll, and a page for admin. Now in terms of the ADF UI shell, eventually each one of these pages will become one of the primary tabs in the UI shell. Now when you click on one of those primary tabs, you need to provide a navigation rule for that primary tab to then navigate to one of the other ADF UI shell pages. In order to do that, the easiest way is just to create some wildcard navigation rules and the appropriate navigation rule names between them. And you'll see this pop out when we start actually constructing the actual real contents of the ADF UI shell pages in a moment. Now for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm not going to build all three ADF UI shell pages, we'll just do the HR page. So when we double click on that in the Unbounded Task Flow, we get to create the page and under the page templates, we can select a number of pre-existing templates. And if you remember correctly at the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that the ADF UI shell is also called the Oracle Dynamics tab shell, so that's the one we're going to pick here. As a result, we get the page based on a page template, the dynamic tab shell, and you can see all the facets of the ADF UI shell coming in here. Let's just switch to the design view, the WYSIWYG type view. Okay, so we'll just double click here so we can see the overall UI shell. And now this page, you can see all the named facets for the ADF UI shell coming in, the uh, region, uh, sorry, let me say again, the logo at the top right, and so on. And what we really want to do now is actually populate all those facets to make this a much more usable and uh, user-friendly page. It's really just an empty page based on a template at this stage. Now, what I'm not going to do now is start dragging lots of components in from the component palette. I'm going to assume you're familiar enough with JDeveloper um, that you have a general understanding of what the components do. And I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to um, bring in some pre-generated code to populate this uh, particular UI shell. So the very first thing I want to do is pull in some code to allow you to navigate between the different tabs. And the area we would drop that code is the global tabs area. So what I've just injected is some code which will navigate a navigation pane, which will essentially be some tabs. Uh, and then each tab uh, rendered by a command navigation item. Um, you can see here the associated text that will appear on the tabs, the navigation rule that you will navigate down when you click on one of the tabs, and that relates back to the unbounded task flow. And finally, because this is the HR page, we want this first tab to be the one that's selected. Let's have a look at the design time view. You can now see at the top of the screen those tabs um, existing for us. Okay, So we've now added our main navigation items, our global tabs. In addition, in the design time view, we might want to populate some of these other facets. So maybe in the global search facet, we might want command links for popping up preferences, um, an about box, and login and logout facilities. Um, so let's just, again, just cheat and copy in some code to do that. So now you can see we've got a global search uh, facet, horizontal layout for panel group layout made of three links, preferences, about, and log out. Now, I haven't gone and built those facilities yet. That's up to you to build them. They don't come along with the ADF UI shell. But the point being is around the ADF UI shell, you can add all sorts of navigation type facilities for invoking facilities of your application. And if we return to the design time view, you can now see preferences, about, and log out at the top right. Um, so you can continue to fill out all the different facets. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them. You might put some copyright information in here, a version in, information in here. But the real guts of an ADF UI shell page is the navigation items and the content that we'll invoke in the middle. So let's start looking at the navigation items and see what we can do. 
So what I'm going to do again is just cheat and copy in some code. I'm going to copy in this navigation code and I'll explain it once it's copied in. Okay, so here we have the new navigation facet and a panel accordion with two show detail items. And within one of the show detail items, we've basically got a bullet list, a panel list of two command links. Now, from a navigation point of view, I'm not creating a lot of um, uh, um, navigation items yet to invoke banner task flows. We're keeping this application fairly rudimentary. And you can see via those two command links, I'm going to provide a facility to open the department's task flow and close it. Nothing very sophisticated. Yet, the action listener for these two is interesting. You'll notice I'm making a call to something called launcher, open departments as main, and launcher, close current tab. Now that's a bean that I need to create to call the ADF UI shell tab context code that I mentioned earlier on. And literally we're going to build that right now. Let's have a look. We return to JDeveloper's application navigator. We'll create a new bean. Call it launcher. Okay, here's launch here. And just as previous, I'm going to copy in some code, which I'll explain. Oops, wrong class. We're going here. Okay, I'll just bring in the imports. Okay, helps if I click the right button. And let's have a look at this code. So the launcher class includes two action listener methods called open departments main and close current tab. And these relate back to the methods that you see here. Okay. These two methods internally, well, what they do is they grab a the class called tab context. What is that? Well, that's the tab management code from the dynamic shell. And it's effectively a singleton that we fetch. And then we call the various methods of it. Here are two examples, set main contact and remove current tab. Set main content as you can content as you can um, guess there is it actually invokes the department task flow using the ID of the task flow that we've set up earlier. In addition, remote, remove current tab. Pretty obvious that after we've invoked a tab in the second level dynamic tabs area, we'll close it. So that's all we're going to do here in terms of the launcher. Now, at the moment, this guy is just a Java class. I need to wire him in as a managed bean. So I'll just go to the ADFC config file and do that. Okay, and now we've wired that bean in to make those calls. So let's have a look at this now running, now that we've um, created the main parts of our application. So we'll go to the HR page, uh, I should do this from the unbounded task flow, and we'll just invoke that at this stage. All right, so we see that in our browser, the HR page has opened up. We can see that the overall page is already pre-populated with some of the things we dropped in the facets, the global tabs, the search areas, the navigation area. And within the navigation area, we can see our two command links ready to go. So we're gonna click on the open departments link. That has called our launcher code and then invoked the respective departments task flow. Okay. And you'll notice that in this case, unlike the demonstration I showed earlier, there is no second level tab. And that's because with the tab context class here, I use the, I'll just go back and have a quick look at it. I use the set main content option. Now what that option does for the ADF UI shell says is I'm not going to use second level dynamic tabs. There's just going to be one piece of content that I need to open and close. Okay, fair enough, and that's why we get this behavior here with no second level tabs. Um, you can certainly see our banner task flow um, ready to do whatever it needs to do. So from here, we might want to then close that down. Okay, and we have a fairly rudimentary application based on the ADFOE shell. So 
okay, this main content area is kind of cool, but let's show the second level dynamic tab option. Now I'll need to go back and change my source code to implement that. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the main HR page and instead of using um, open departments as main and close current tab, I'll substitute in two different command links. Okay, open departments tab and open employees tab where the launcher code now will call a method called open departments tab and oops, there's a typo, we'll just quickly fix that. Open employees tab, okay. So, where's oh, reformat gone? So we'll um, <clears throat> open the different bounded task flows now. And in addition, I need to have those methods in my launcher. So again, I've pre-created two of those. I'll just copy them in right now, back into my launcher bean. We'll leave the original methods there. But you can see open departments tab and open employees tab. What they do now is, okay, well, we're going to, instead of using a main content, we're going to render dynamic tabs. So we're going to set that to true on the tab content. And then we're going to add a tab called departments, you can see the departments task flow, or alternatively, if we use the employees tab option, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but um, we're going to open employees, uh, the employees task flow. So let's see this running, I'll just restart that original page. So here's the HR page running again, now with our new items. Watch what happens when I click on Open Departments tab in the navigation area. So this time we get a Departments tab in the main area and we can even spawn that again. So we can have multiple instances of that bounded task file open. We can switch between them and we can in addition open the Employees tab as well. So do you see all the different levels of dynamic tabs we've got open now? Now, curiously, when I click on the Open Employees tab, hmm, it doesn't open up again. But we did get that behavior with the Departments tab. Why is that so? If we return to JDeveloper, you might have noticed back in the bean that the Open Departments tab calls Add tab, whereas Open Employees tab calls Add or Select tab. And what that function there does, which is different from the first, the first will always spawn new instances of the department's bounded task flow in this case. This particular method here says, well, I'll open this employee's task flow unless it's already open, and then I'll just switch to the existing one. So we can really control how the tabs are open in our application and really change the behavior of the application for the user if we so desire. So overall, what we require to use the ADF UI shell is a page that has the ADF UI shell built into it. We need our navigation items that then call our launcher class. And the launcher class ultimately needs to call the task flows that we've pre-built. And that's pretty much all we need to do. And that's a rudimentary application demonstrating the ADF UI shell being used. In concluding the demonstration, let's just uh, conclude the presentation by talking about the, some of the limitations of the ADF UI shell, something about the source code, and we'll finish up with references. In terms of the limitations of the current implementation of the ADF UI shell, one thing is that it will only support at the second level a maximum of 15 dynamic tabs. Okay, now this happens to be a hard coding that's built into the ADF UI shell that at some stage in the future we may fix, but at the moment we haven't. Now, some customers find that rather limiting. Oh, it only supports 15 second level tabs. But I can tell you from my own contemporary uh, experience in building things with the ADF UI shell, most applications you don't want more than four or five, maybe seven second level tabs at most. The reason being because each one of those tabs if you think about them, they're nearly another session for the user. So those tabs can spawn bounded task flows with, depending on the options you've used, your own data, uh, and, and if you're using ADF business components, your own connections and database connections and memory resources. If you allow the user to spawn too many tabs, effectively, you're effectively um, multiplying the user's session and size quite considerably which may be fine for maybe an enterprise application where you can control what the users are doing, but is really not gonna fly for an internet scalable application where you could have thousands and thousands of users. So be careful how much facilities you give the users here. 
when the ADFOE shell is definitely empowering, but maybe it's a little bit too empowering. The other thing about the maximum 15 tabs limit here is from reality, if you even spawn a number of second level tabs, simply because of the screen real estate, you can't see that many tabs on the screen at once. They'll start to stretch off the right hand side. In fact, what um, ADF does is you'll get a little drop down. So the user would have to go into that drop down and then start selecting the tabs. This isn't really ideal. Most users can't deal with that many tabs open. So um, from my perspective, again, having implemented the ADF UI shell, the number of sites, even though the uh, the ADF UI shell supports 15 tabs, we would limit it. We previously limited it down to seven or maybe five tabs just to make it manageable for users. There is another limitation or catch with the ADF UI shell that you need to be made aware of, and this is the last bullet point. I mentioned that the ADF UI shell that for the number of subsystems of your application, you will have a number of pages based on the ADF UI shell, such as HR, procurement, and so on. Note that when you have at runtime, one of those pages opened and a number of dynamic tabs opened underneath that ADF UI shell. If you then switch to the other ADF UI shell page and back again to the original ADF UI shell page that had the four or five uh, dynamic tabs already open, the associated bounded task loads for those ADF UI shells will restart. Now this is a big problem because if the users were in the middle of a transaction and then they skipped off to a different screen and came back, obviously the transactions will be lost. So before allowing users to do that, you need to make sure that they've saved the current state of their application before moving to the other ADF uh, UI shell page. So just keep that limitation in mind. It's definitely a problem, but it's just the way that ADF UI shell works and you need to write your application to take care of that. Let's just finally consider source code. Now, in terms of source code for the ADF UI shell, as we saw during the demonstration since version 11.1.1.2.0 of JDeveloper, when you create a JSF page, you can actually base your JSF page on the Oracle Dynamic Tab shell, as you can see in the diagram here. Now, the advantage of basing your web pages on the Dynamic Tab shell here is you're actually basing it on the source code embedded in the JDeveloper that you downloaded. So this gives you the advantages that when you uh, migrate up to newer JDeveloper versions, there's really nothing that you have to do. You'll just get the new version of the Dynamic Tab Shell for you. And in addition, there's no source code management of the Dynamic Tab Shell. You definitely have to source, uh, put your own web pages based on the ADF UI Shell in your source code tool, such as Subversion, but you don't have to manage the ADF UI Shell source code itself. The disadvantages of this though is when you migrate up to new versions of the ADF UI shell, effectively you get all the new features of the ADF UI shell in the future that Oracle may uh, decide to introduce and this could cause you a problem. Maybe it will break something but in addition maybe we will change the functionality to such a way that your users won't like it. So you have no choice here. And another disadvantage of the ADF UI shell and using the code that's associated or built into JDeveloper is what happens if you want to slightly change the behavior of the ADF UI shell. You can't do that because you don't have the source code that's built in. So to alleviate this problem, there is a white paper available for the ADF UI shell and you can see the bit.ly link here. And in that bit.ly uh, link from the ADF UI shell white paper, at the bottom of that you'll find a zip file that you can download the actual ADF UI shell code yourself. Now from here what you need to do then is effectively source control and turn that ADF UI shell code that you've downloaded into an ADF library and then inject it into your application. It's now your code, it's just obviously you've copied it from Oracle, but it's your code to maintain and use from thereafter. And the major advantages of this is now you have the ability to modify the ADF UI shell. And in addition, when you migrate up JDeveloper versions, you can control um, essentially what new features uh, come into the ADF UI shell at your own, uh, at your own uh, discretion. The disadvantages, therefore, are you need to obviously now control this code as well. So you've got to add it to source code, your subversion repository potentially. And as you go up versions, Maybe Oracle will inject new features or bug fixes into future ADF UI shell code versions and you're going to now have to go and check and move that code down from Oracle's implementation into yours. So between getting the ADF UI shell built into JDeveloper or downloading it and building it yourself, you can see there are advantages and disadvantages 
and it's up to you to make a choice which one is applicable to your requirements. Finally, in the presentation today, let's just consider some references. The ADF UI Shell white paper is available to you, and there's the bit.ly link. As I mentioned previously, and we saw during the uh, demonstration part early on in this presentation, Frank Nymphius has an Oracle Magazine white paper, uh, sorry, an Oracle Magazine article that you can download and uh, view yourself. This sample application is also available via that link. There is a forum dedicated to uh, ADF UI um, type uh, patterns, which the ADF UI shell comes under, and therefore there's a discussion there, a, uh, I should say a link there for you to take your discussions further about the ADF UI shell. Finally, previously, um, there is a paper on a blog available externally to you um, about adding security to the ADF UI shell. And that may just get you, uh, again, get you through a quick set of steps for not only using the ADF UI shell, but securing it for your own needs. So in concluding the presentation today, and thanks very much for coming along, um, the ADF UI shell ultimately provides look, feel, layer, and a sophisticated in-tab management facility for your applications to use. It is an accelerator in terms of development because you don't have to build your own UI shell, and also an educational tool which developers should maybe have a look at to understand what they maybe should be building for their rich internet applications. It is a proven Fusion Applications pattern, so it'll give you that lovely fresh minty Fusion Apps taste, and it's also supported into the future. So with these points in mind, okay, the ADF UI shell isn't for everybody, but I think it is definitely a valuable tool for everybody to look at at least to understand what they may want in an UI shell in the future. Alternatively, a number of customers, including Oracle and uh, partners and so on, have used the ADF UI shells to deliver successful applications. So it is still a very worthy use, uh, worthy software package for you to use in building your own ADF applications. Thanks for joining today's ADF Insider Recording. If you're interested in learning more about JDeveloper and the application development framework, please head to oracle.com forward slash technology forward slash JDev. There you'll find a lot more downloadable tutorials, discussion forums, samples, the ADF developer guides, and much more.